What were some of the training things that you took away from that crew that you still use now? Obviously, the rest periods, you've shortened those. But. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had super <laughs> long rest periods. Um, just how they uh, how they would peak, how we'd, you know these guys would train to peak for a meet. Um, just the numbers, what they'd hit, you know, work backwards from whatever, you know. Just some of their training protocols, um, how uh, how to set up in certain positions, like how, like on a deadlift or, or the bench. Um, what do you just mean? Just different cues, you like know. For the deadlift, give me an example. Like how to how to brace yourself with your belt and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd come in there and I would just pick shit up. You know, I, mm -hmm. it's kind of nuts. And he taught me how to deadlift better. Um, when you, how would you explain how you ex brace with the belt? Uh, like you're taking a shit, you know, pretty <laughs> yeah. much. Putting which that is how you, under. which actually you did. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, your coach, you told me to shit, you know. Um, you know, and then like uh, how to get really tight on the bench. Um, and what what are some things that you think about there that care? Like if you were to explain what that means to somebody that has no clue. So pushing my knees out, getting real tight with your legs, driving back into your uh, traps, you know how I set up, how I, I press against that bar real tight, um, grip the bar, you know, bend it in half, all that bullshit. Um, just like a whole body movement instead of just using my chest. Was there anything with the bench or any cue that somebody told you at one time that after you did it, you are like, holy shit. Like, yeah. You know, it was a big difference. What was that? That was probably uh, – uh, it would probably be the way – my shoulders set back because they were not as back before. Like, like, the, like, uh, how, how you finish here mm -hmm. instead of your shoulders a little forward, that's like three inches, you know, mm -hmm. that's three inches less you have to travel. Yeah. You know? So when I was younger, I didn't know that, you know, and then I, I got taught that, you know, what, 10 years ago or something. Yeah. So I've, I've always, you know, really gotten back on my traps, really, you know, s squeeze them together, shoulder blades together and all that. Yeah. Shorten that range of motion up more. Um, and then, uh, Ed Cohen taught me that big toe trick. He said, like, push down with your big toe. It engages your leg drive better. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of anything like mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never knew that. He taught me that at my house one time. Well, speaking of that, that was the same night we brought a goat over to my shed. When Ed come over to my shed, I, I used to lift in a shed. Oh, oh, God. And we had okay. a pregnant goat there waiting for him. Okay. So the goat and the goat. And the, yeah. So okay. it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> the goat gave birth like two days later. Yeah. He was shitting all over the backyard. All right. So, so what did you do with the goat? So I ended up... Um, benching with the goat like on my stomach while the goat was giving me a lift off, benching like 500 pounds or something. The goat? They, they picked the goat up and put it on my stomach. Yeah. Right? While the goat's there, and then Ed Cohen's giving me a lift off. Uh, okay, I the goat. goat. I get yeah. it. I get it. I get it. So we did that. Um, we have, speaking of goat. We also benched a goat. Yeah, right? I benched a goat. Uh, what was it? 80, I don't, whatever, whatever it was. How many ever number of years it was that the Cubs didn't win the World Series? It's like 80 some years or 80 it's some reps. Like a century, right? Like 100 yeah. years. Yeah, that was on uh, the pregame show, dubbed as the World's Strongest Cub Fan. And I was making fun of the Cleveland. I called him. I said, this is for all you fat, out of shape, Cleveland sweat hogs out there. Let me show you what a real man looks like. And then I like, picked up like 500 pounds with one arm, and I was hitting fucking empty beer cans with a baseball bat with the other. <laughs> and then uh, they, they also played where I benched the goat like 108 times. That's what okay. it was, 108. And the, my buddy, you know, he borrowed his neighbor's goat. And he had it in his truck. And we're at Barbell Central. He pulls up with the goat, brings it inside, shits all over the gym immediately. I mean, just shit everywhere. Like, oh, fuck. We got to hurry up and get this going. We put on my little platform, and I bench the goat, and we got him right out of there and cleaned up the shit. So you're, you're in Aurora. You're in downtown fucking Chicago, and it just shows up with a goat. Yeah, he showed up, you know, with a goat. He got it from, you know, 30 miles from there, yeah. his neighbor's house. But why? To bench a goat, because the goat, uh, okay, that was the so, curse. Okay, all right, so that was the thing. All so right, so the curse for the Cubs, I don't know if you know the curse of the Cubs, was the curse of the goat. I don't know anything about the goat with the cup. Oh, so a guy brought a goat into Wrigley back yeah. in 1908 or 1909, whatever it was, and they wouldn't let a goat in. He bought a ticket, and then he cursed the Cubs. So they always called it the curse of the goat. So the Cubs didn't win for like 100 years, and everybody's like, there's that fucking goat. Well, that's how I broke the curse. So you broke the curse. By benching a goat 108 yeah. times. Yes, and then they went on. And then they went on and beat Cleveland in seven, game seven and won the World Series. So it fucking worked. So you got me to thank for it. Yeah. <laughs> So wait, at what point? At what point in time did you think to start doing this stupid shit? Right? Um, because you're you're benching, right? And yeah. obviously, say you're 
I'm going to kind of put pieces together. You're benching, then you're you're on social media mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And you're like, fuck. Well, I'll you tell know? you how I got on social media. I didn't even know anything about it. All right, go. I wasn't on social media until must have been right before my first meet, a supplement company or supplement store in, our, in DeKalb said, hey, we'll sponsor you if you go compete. I said, okay. Yeah. So they sponsored me. I haven't done shit yet. And these guys sponsored me, gave me all kinds of free supplements, you know, and, everything, and paid for my stuff. And uh, I could pee, and he comes back, he goes, hey, could you get on Instagram? I said, isn't that for women? Like, that's like a picture site for women, ain't it? I don't want to get on there. Mm -hmm. They said, just, just get on it, you know, be good. So I said, all right. So then I, I, I asked my buddy Tom Callis, who I train with a lot too, I had him help me set it up because I had no idea what I was doing. So then I throw on like a bench video, I, like my first video was like me bench like 500 pounds. And it's like getting no views. I'm like, man, there's not many people in the world at 220 can bench 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. I don't know nobody likes this. So I'm sitting up in a, a tower one night at work, and, um, and I'm like, man, what am I good at? So I'm good at bench pressing, and I'm good at drinking beer. <laughs> so I said, let's put that together. I'll, I'll do a video where I'm bench pressing, and, and, I, and I'm uh, doing a beer bong, 500-pound bench with a beer bong. Nobody's done that. Yeah. So yeah. I did that, and then that kind of started things going. And then I'm like, oh, I, I want to be entertaining because I've – I like being strong, but also being entertaining. So I want to see something entertaining. Like, what do I want to see? I want to see something that I've never seen before. Like, mm -hmm. holy fuck, what is that? Yeah. I mean, my whole life, you know, I've been a class clown or, you know, I've been, you know, just trying to entertain people as well. So I think that's kind of what it was. And I'm like, well, we'll do, we'll do lifts. We'll do entertaining shit, do shit nobody's ever seen before. And that's kind of how it just kind of snowballed after that. So how's the alcohol play out when you are dealing with things like Instagram, social media, where that I can see that being something that's going to get shadow banned. Yeah. You know, like. Well, I always try to be myself. Um, I'm, I'm, I like to drink beer. I like to lift weights. Um, and that's just who I am. So yeah. I, if they shadow ban me, they shadow ban me, but I'm not going to like change. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, um, like an average guy who just goes home and drinks. I just happen to be extraordinary, extraordinarily. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Strong. Yeah. You know? And, um, I like putting them both together. There's got to be more to it, though. You're just not – you're not eating like shit. Right? No, 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 no. I right. eat like a bodybuilder almost. Yeah. I don't – I can't maintain it like a physique like this without – I mean, my, my, my diet is very good. I'd say at least 80% of the time, you know, I, I eat similar to how a bodybuilder would eat almost. And then probably about 20% of the time I would, uh, you know, drink beer, eat pizza. I love eating pizza, mm -hmm. uh, shit like that. So I don't want to live a life where I have to, like, ever, count every calorie or something like that. Yeah, but I don't want to look like shit. I don't want to be a sloppy piece of shit either. So what are your what are your tenants? Oh, it would be uh, if you're going to take over yeah, the king, right? So uh, good evening. <laughs> no, what is this afternoon? <laughs> what time is it? It's it's two. Good afternoon, primals. This is your old pal Huck Finn Barbell here with the nine alpha on ancestral uh, tenants. <laughs> Tenant number one: We like to lift weights. Tenant number two, we drink beer. Tenant number three, we fuck. Uh, that's the only three I got so far. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I got to work on the rest of the six. Well, at some point, you got to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got to eat. We don't eat <laughs> testicles. We eat pussy. Right? Yeah, that's fucking great. That Liver King guy is something else. <laughs> yeah, thank you. By the way, thank you, Liver King, for helping my sight. The fucking shirts are through the roof. People love them. <laughs> and then when when you're coming up with these skits, mm -hmm. do they just fucking come out of nowhere? It's that like I know Juju Rowe, right? I mean, he yeah. plans the shit out. You know, yeah. it's kind of all laid out. Is it to is it to that level, or is it more to here's the idea? <laughs> Because uh, you got some of these things need a long time. I know out. some of them are, are, are take quite a while. Like some of the the bigger ones definitely are planned out. Yeah. But most of them, I'll have an idea in my head. I'll write something down. I'll, I'll ask some of my buddies, "Hey, what do, you, what do you think you can do off this? You got anything about this? You know, one of my buddies used to like write comedy, so I ask him sometimes. Yeah. Hey, what's funny? What what's a good? Because I also like um like pro wrestling. I love pro wrestling as well. So growing up, I love. The promos, like them doing a promo, you yeah. know, like Hulk Hogan or something, or Steve Austin doing a promo. So I like cutting promos, too. So that's kind of like how that – some of these other shit where I just talk on the mic, too. I think that's funny. Yeah. And, and it works. But, uh, like, the bigger videos, 
we, I did a 4th of July video. I've done a 4th of July video a few times, but probably the biggest one I did was on a boat, and I was lifting weights with like 400 fireworks going off at the same time out in the middle of a lake, and uh, that took a while. My buddy had found a boat, an old boat, <laughs> so mm-hmm. we just get rid of. We fucking pushed it out. We got like 400 fireworks, brought 225 pounds out to the boat. We hit it on a rope. He pushed it out about 50 feet. And uh, the fireworks started going off. People are fishing. They're yelling at me and shit. And I'm fucking lifting weights. Fireworks. I mean, fireworks everywhere. Mm-hmm. That took a lot of a lot of time. Stuff like that takes a lot of time, you know. When, what's the most viral one that you've done? Oh, jeez. I... That's hard to. It's hard to pinpoint. It's hard to pinpoint because if it gets picked up, yeah. wait, let's look, let me get a different. Which one was picked up by the most outlets? I think that Fourth of July one was. Oh, really? Yeah. That Fourth of July one was big, and then. Probably the one, uh, like, Juke and Media has bought some of my videos. So the one where I fell off a T-bar roll machine has been, like, everywhere for, like, seven years. <laughs> like, that one's everywhere. And then when I ran through the vending machine, that's in a lot of places. Um, but that 4th of July one, man, that, that is everywhere. Every time something needs to be said with, like, the United States, it just – I don't follow soccer, but there's, like, a the soccer thing, you know, where there's the mm-hmm. World Cup. Well, all these companies were using my video. You know, I don't get paid for that. I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say, how do you protect that then? Well, I mean, you try to, I, I guess you, I sell some of them to like uh, media outlets and they'll buy them and then they'll protect it. Yeah. So I can't, I try to, I haven't, I, I'm an idiot. I should be selling them more. I asked Juji years ago. Yeah. Hey, how do, what do you use for your videos so I can sell these videos and all this? And he said, Juke and Media. And I talked to a guy and they bought a lot of my videos. But uh, the last couple of years, I, I haven't really sold any. And that would have been a huge one because that is, I mean, literally everywhere. Yeah. Like, DraftKings used it yesterday. Like everybody keeps using that video every Fourth of July. Every time there's something to do with the United States, it's that video with "I'm Real American" playing in the background. You know? Yeah. So that's a catch twenty two though, because you don't know that you should have mm-hmm. somebody representing it until it's already been used. Oh, I know it. And yeah. then you don't want to fucking have them pull it down. No, because it's, it's still attention. good publicity. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So yeah, my, my, I asked my wife because she's a lot smarter than me. I said. Man, these fucking look at all these companies. This got a million views on DraftKings yesterday. It's my video. I'm not even mentioned yeah, it at yeah, all. Yeah. And she's like, "Well, why don't you watermark it? I don't even know how to watermark shit. What? What? Well, thanks for telling me. Now well, you told pull, me that three years yeah, ago. They pull it off. What? They would pull a watermark off? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they would yeah, find probably. a way to. So there's just no way. Yeah. You know, I still think it's great publicity either way. If we get paid, you get paid. Yeah. You know, eventually it comes around. You know, people buy your products. It just 